So, Steve, could you tell us a little bit about your background? Well, I grew up in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia, uh, and kind of started uh, cooking with my mom at a younger age, you know, about 10 or 11. I got a job at Outback Steakhouse as a dishwasher, and I uh, really enjoyed the atmosphere there as far as the hustle and bustle of the kitchen. And from that point on, I moved to uh, a hotel, worked there, and did a little bit of banquet prep. And uh, after that, I moved to a bunch of different restaurants, a steakhouse, a seafood house. And uh, after that, I ended up going to Johnson & Wales, uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Graduated there. Uh, and then, uh, you know, with an associates, and after that, I went to the Greenbrier in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia, and based my, I you mean, know, that's my core uh, education right there is the Greenbrier Apprenticeship Program. After that, I uh, moved down to Florida for about a year, and then, uh, you know, the mountains kind of called me back, so I moved back to West Virginia and got a job at the Greenbrier Sporting Club and moved myself up uh, to the executive chef position uh, in 2008. And from that point on, uh, you know, I've been around the kitchen and trying to use as much local food as possible. So, Chef Guster, can you tell us, can you give us an overview of the Greenbrier Sporting Club? Well, the Greenbrier Sporting Club was built on the uh, old Greenbrier Airport. Uh, now it's, uh, it's about 6,500 acres, and there's all kinds of different home sites from Creekside to mountainside views to uh, views on the golf course. Uh, it's kind of a place where uh, people can call it their home on the Greenbrier property. Our members have a lot of different amenities. Uh, they have our own at our club, which we have our own spa, fitness center, uh, pool, you know, you name it. We've pretty much got everything. It's, as far as calling it the sporting life, uh, we do everything from rafting, or camping trips, fishing, to, uh, you know, shooting bows and guns and you know, you name it. It's it, that's what makes our place a little bit different from most uh, clubs. And you know, we have about 400 members right now. That's you know, range from all over the country. Is you know, but a lot of them are uh, from Florida, and you know, come up here during the season. And you know, <clears throat> they have amenities at the hotel at a, at discounted rates. So they have everything at the hotel, plus they have their own place they can call their own, and it's a little bit more private. So, Chef, what's your approach to menus there? How do you build menus at the Sporting Club? Well, it all starts with the season. Um, you know, it's like what we can get from the farmers. Um, you know, we try to get the best uh, proteins possible, meaning the best fish, the best, you know, beef, the best uh, pork. And I believe you guys already... Uh, started to talk with Eden Farms, which, uh, which is a great company, very, 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 I mean, phenomenal pork, it's best I've ever had. And then from there, it starts with the proteins and, you know, adding them all, kind of meshing them all together. Uh, and, like, again, it changes with the, the seasons. You know, we do everything from tasting menus to, uh, you know, five course to ten course to, you know, banquets to dine arounds. You know, we, we pretty much do every type of menu um, possible. Uh, and it just depends on the season and what kind of events we do. So really just locally, in-season, fresh. Yeah, as fresh as, you know, getting the stuff that day and, you know, putting it on the plate that evening. So so it sounds like you work real closely with local farmers. And uh, it, it sounds like that's, I mean, obviously that's the way to go. Yeah, that's the direction that, um, you know, a lot of places are going right now. And, you know, I don't want to sit there and order asparagus from Peru when I can get it locally. Um, and if I can't get it, then I probably won't use it unless it's specifically asked for. Um, and, you know, it kind of starts in the winter time as far as, like, what to grow. So this winter, you know, right now, uh, we'll start talking to farmers and saying, okay, let's grow more golden beets next year. Let's grow uh, more chayogi beets or, you know, different radishes or corn or I want to use more shiitake mushrooms, so bump up your, um, you know, shiitake logs this next season. So it's really, it sounds like you guys have a really open line of communication between your farmers, and, you know, and that's how it should be. I mean, that's, they're, they're growing your food, and, you know. No, we got to take care of the farm, and it's not only that, it's, it's, uh, it's also supporting your local economy, you know, your local community. Well, I look forward to meeting everybody. You know, I'm, I might be swinging through next week. All right. Well, you got a place to stay, man. You're more than welcome to uh, shack up at my house. Well, hey, Steve, I look forward to seeing you out there in West Virginia, learning about more about the sporting club and the relationship you have with local farmers and then the way you guys do it. I know you guys are setting trends out there in the culinary world. Steve, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Uh, we'll see you next time, my man. I appreciate you having me. I look forward to having you here.
I may have to break out a uh, jar of moonshine for you. Uh-oh. Right That's here wrong. in West Virginia. Hey, buddy. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thanks a lot, Stephen Guster.